Hello and welcome. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful back in the studio with a fun new project today. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. So if you're brand new to my channel, I'd like to say welcome. If you have not yet subscribed, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out on future videos. If you'd like a notification when I do post a new one, click on the little bell and you'll know when I've posted something new. So today's video is going to kind of feel hopefully like one video, but I actually recorded the base of this video a few days ago as I, as I was working on this project and needed to uh, kind of start from the beginning again. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to, to share it. It was some, something that I thought I was maybe going to share, but I recently had a question from someone about what do I do with my gel prints. I've been uh, making stencils and gel prints the last few weeks probably. And uh, I had that question and you'll find lots of videos on things people that use their gel prints for originally i started making them for one i wanted to play around with my stencils and i hadn't used my gel print in a while and so i wanted to make a bunch for collage papers just so i have a stash of um, kind of handmade art to use to tear up for collage so that's that was the intent when i was making them but i was then asked if i would decorate my son and Leah's wedding in May. And so they've kind of given me free reign to just, you know, go for it, do whatever I want. And so that's a lot of fun. So I've asked Leah for ideas if she had anything in mind. You know, I want the wedding obviously to reflect them and also with my spin on it. So um, that's what we're doing. And it's going to be kind of very bohemian. She asked for lots of color and it, uh, it's going to be simple in their backyard. But I wanted to, you know, kind of meet her wanting lots of color uh, idea. And then one thing that they do is they love to play board games. And so she had this idea based on one of their board games that they have. And I asked her to kind of send me something so I would see. She sent me a photo of a little black tray. And it was about probably the size of the inside of this from what I could picture. And then she sent me some little magnetic words. And she had already ordered a bunch of kit sets of these little magnetic words. And they have... You know, some of them are words and then some of them are, you know, parts of words or all the little filler words or that sort of thing. So I wanted to see the size and that I was going to be dealing with because I needed to kind of decide how we were going to display these. She wanted it to, a heart shape that would be, could hold these magnetic pieces and that would be the kind of game board for the guests at the wedding to then have a collection of words that they could either do a little poem or some wedding advice, marriage advice, that kind of thing. And then I needed a way to display them. So if you wait, if you watch all the way to the end of the video, I'm going to put a photo of a, a chippy window frame, old window frame that I have, that I have added some lace to, to be able to um, hang these little ornaments for the wedding. So I wanted to kind of add to the video the first video that I did was the base of how how I made the gel prints, how I made the hearts, and all of that from beginning to end. So I got kind of tired at the end of my video, and I was I was sharing how you could finish these hearts. This is kind of just the basic heart created, you know, ready to go with a little hanger, but nothing decorative added to it yet. And I kind of ended the video there. So I decided that since I have finished a bunch and I have some more to do and kind of had an idea that I would go ahead and share the finishing touches too that I'm using. And then that way you can kind of see the whole project from beginning to end. So this video is going to jump to uh, the one I recorded a couple of days ago uh, to start making the bases, and then I'm going to do the new part so you'll kind of see the setup again. So it's going to look a little disjointed, and, and then we're going to go from there. So let's get started. To make the actual heart, I was going to do this with like balsa wood or something like that because my, my Cricut maker can cut that material, but I didn't have it, and I was trying to do a little sample for her with just materials that I had. So that works out great because you can even use recycled materials 
and just do this with a craft knife if you don't have a Cricut. So um, what you'll want to do, just to get these shapes first, and then I'll show you about the gel printing. To get these actual shapes, you want to start that part, and you can use cereal boxes, cracker boxes, and I think that would work great because I use those for my book covers, and it makes a nice sturdy thickness. For this actual one, I had a package of chipboard. And I think I got this at Hobby Lobby. Okay, now I would actually rather use recycled materials. The reason I went ahead and used this for me was because it came in 12 by 12 sheets and that's what my Cricut mats can handle. I could use smaller things. I've cut out things on Cricut with my recycled cereal boxes, double layers that I did for my, the spools that I keep my lace on, if you saw that, if you saw that video. But like I said, I had this and so I thought I might as well use it. The thing I did not like about this is in one of my steps, when I went to paint on it, it actually delaminated and I think I have an example I can show you that. So my recommendation is don't go out and buy this. Use recycled materials. I think that will actually kind of save a step. Okay, so on mine, I used, if you are going to use the chipboard or even cereal boxes, I used two layers. I thought one layer was too thin and flexible. And the this was, the original sheets were 0.5 millimeter thickness. Uh, so I doubled it up. And I just used Mod Podge and I poured it on and I used a silicone spreader, just this little paint blender, because it just was able to get it covered every little bit and then I didn't have any bubbling or anything like that. So you want it, if you're going to do two sheets together, you want them completely covered in glue. And that's why Mod Podge worked well because it's thinner, it's thinned down PVA. So if you don't have Mod Podge, uh, you can just use PVA glue and thin it down a little bit just so it gets completely covered, no empty spots or so that you don't have any bubbles. So uh, once you put the two pieces together, I put them under books overnight so that they can get nice and flat again. And then I have coated both sides with magnetic primer. Like I said, the first time I tried it, it actually, when I went back and forth too much with uh, my roller, it bubbled up and delaminated. So the, that meant one layer of the paper of this chipboard just completely peeled off because it was wet. So then I decided I needed to use, prime this first maybe would help. It kind of still did it. I had to really be careful. So for the chipboard, if you're going to use that, I had to prime that and I just used a cheap gesso for that to prime it. This is a primer, so it, it should have theoretically worked on its own. This is by rust and it's magnetic latex primer. So it's uh, super easy. Make sure you stir it really well. But what it does is it creates a magnetic surface on anything that you paint it on. You could do this on the wall. And so then uh, these little magnets will stick to it. The nice thing about it in part of my experiment was I've used this before. It ends up looking like chalkboard paint. Actually, you probably could just write on it with chalk. It has that kind of matte finish because it's a primer. Uh, so you could just leave it like that, or you can paint over it any color. So if you did it on a wall in a kid's room or something like that, then you would be able to stick magnets on it and they could just, you know, play. So my idea though was I thought if I'm gonna make these hearts, I want them to be cuter for the wedding and the wedding is gonna be kind of a bohemian style. So I want some artsy touches in it. And so I decided I liked how the words looked against the black, you know, they just really popped. But I thought on the other side, I could make them cute. So since I've been into all this jelly printing and collaging and things, I thought it would be really fun to make them each one of a kind um, that kind of goes with our theme for the wedding. And then they can each just be a little, a little art piece on their own. So that's what I'm kind of doing with them. Uh, the fun thing was I actually kind of did three little different mock-up uh, because the question that I had recently that, that kind of got me to do this video was, what do I use? How do I use my stencils that I'm making? And what do I do with my finished papers that I'm using, doing on the gel plate? So that's kind of why I wanted to share this little project that I'm doing. So I'll show you when I get to the end, kind of how I finished these, but I'm going to take you through the steps. So the first one was to create my base so that I have, you know, something to work with and those could be drying. So, you know, I'm, I'm making quite a few of these. So I've got you know, some bases ready now. So for my gel printing, I'm gonna use a nine by 12 
plate. And the part, part of the reason why I'm doing that is because the I'm using Japanese rice paper and it happens to be nine by 12. And then I just don't have a lot of waste around the edge. So you could use a smaller plate um, and then maybe just do it multiple times just to not waste your paper. I'll end up using the scraps anyway, but um, that was just kind of my idea. So if you watched the last video, I had made, I was, I was making papers that kind of look like tiles. And that's what kind of gave me this idea. I liked a lot of different color and pattern. Uh, Leah's request for the wedding was that she wanted it really colorful and she's an artistic person also. So she wanted it, you know, just really colorful and fun. It's a backyard wedding. So it's, it's you know, casual, but it's still a wedding. So the napkins that we've ordered are all a different patterns. They're going to be very colorful and all different patterns. So I thought it would be fun to do these little hearts. You know, they're going to be off in their little area. The same kind of thing with lots of color and lots of little pattern. So I made some stencils to look like tile grout. And then that way I can use, have the grout be a metallic. And then that way it, it shows and uh, throws in a little sparkle and a little metallic into my design. So I could use this one. Um, that I like to do a little ties, and I may do one. This one I did in an eight by 10. So I may do that over here as a second one. But then I even liked an even skinnier little grout line. And I didn't really care that they were all looking like tiles because they're all gonna get cut up. So I'm just doing, I just did this random one just to throw in some gold lines. So the first thing I'm gonna do on my plate, I'm gonna use this as a palette. I'm gonna use this as my design for my pull. So I wanna do something for in between that is um, metallic. So I'm just gonna use this one, I think. You can use, these are uh, golden acrylics. I used these in the last video. These are the heavy body acrylics. This one's gold deep. You can also just use inexpensive uh, less expensive anyway. Basic acrylics, they come in metallics too. So I'm gonna use this one just for the fun of it. So I'm gonna do a similar technique to what I did in the previous video where I put a paint down first so that it's, it's my grout lines. It's not gonna show up a ton because these are really skinny. So I'm just gonna do a really thin layer. I'm, I'm thinking as I'm doing this because I'm, I've already cut up the paper that I used and I'm trying to remember how I did it. So let's just use this one already has gold on it. So I'm gonna do just a thin layer. This is gonna go for my grout lines. And this is just gonna kind of be, um, my goal is to make this paper a collage on its own, but then I'm gonna be cutting it up and collaging with it. So it's gonna, it's kind of redundant, I guess. You don't have to do this step and you don't have to do the grout lines because it's going to get cut up. You could you could draw them on later if you wanted some gold lines or gold marks. You could draw them on with uh, a gold paint pen or something. But I have this, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this here. And that means all the gold is under that, those under that. And then I'm going to just take a... And I can use this later, but I'm going to pull up all those little cells, we're gonna call those. And it'll leave a little bit behind, which is fine because that's gonna leave me, if I pull this off and don't get all this gold, it's gonna leave like almost like gold leaf, uh, little bits on there that are gonna show through too. And I don't mind that. I like having that little sparkle, you know, on my, on my paper. So I'm just gonna pull that up. And I'm going to use this um, Baron. It's just a speedball, and that's going to help pull some of that. This dries so fast um, that it's going to leave a lot behind. So you can see that there's more left behind. I could try to pull more of that up, you know, by letting this dry. And it, whatever you want to come up, if not enough comes up and it, your paint's already dry, you can use a baby wipe and pull some more of that up. So I can use this later and stencil on it and, and use it still. But I think I might take just a little tiny bit more of this off. This one has a lot and I want, when you see my next step, I want it to show, to show through really well. Now I didn't do all of my papers that I, for the hearts like this, I, I want to vary them up. So I've already, I'll show you my pile. I've already cut them up. 
that I'll use for my collage, but I wanted to make one in this with this idea so you can kind of see how I go about it. Now, I've made a bunch of my stencils into smaller patterns, and so I'm gonna use some of these. And then just because of the feel of this, some little X's and O's would be good. All of these actually are nice shapes for this. Some of my favorite ones in the circles I always like. And I think that's good for those. I also have some purchased ones too. Some little um, medallion shapes that would be nice for the feel. Some paisleys we're going to use. I love these little florals. And I, I, I can't tell you where I got all these because I've had them for a while. So I, I probably won't use all of these in this one thing. But um, some Tim Holtz. These small ones are nice. So let's try, let's try these are probably, you know, some, some little florals, these little flower, oops, these little flowers are nice. Okay, I think that's good for this one. We can't fit them all. Okay, so I'm going to use these stencils. I'm going to use this as my mixing palette. Now I'm going to, she wants bright color. So I'm just gonna use a lot of different colors. It can be very random, it's not gonna matter. This is from Walmart, the Royal Lang Nickel Aqua. It's very similar to the Liquitex. It's very similar to the bright aqua green of the Liquitex Basics. So we're gonna use some of that, get a small little roller here. And then what I'm gonna do is just grab one of these, doesn't matter which one, and I'm just gonna start layering up. And um, they can overlap the cells they don't have to you know one can go from here over to here now the one thing i'm using a brayer for some but i won't for all when you get into these smaller stencils it's like stenciling sometimes it'll leak through if you have too much paint and a brayer might you know might have too much paint on it so it works okay for these larger ones but for the smaller ones i found that using a makeup sponge uh, works much better so I'm just gonna kind of put that, and again, I'm no, they're gonna all be torn up anyway. So I just wanna randomly move around some of my color. And then if I add another little color to that, it can just change that color. Instead of wasting that, I'll put a little bit of this lighter blue. And this one is, again, Royal Lang Nickel Light Blue. And they don't have to all be, that, that's way too much paint on there, I can already tell, to go through most of these stencils. So let's grab this one maybe. And you just wanna kind of move the color around. And if you get too much paint while you're doing this, just grab a makeup sponge. You know, and you can pull pull some back, like even that one if I wanted to line it up again and kind of remove some of that. And then I can use this, you know, if I'm doing similar colors, like all cool colors, or I can just rotate my sponge and do it that way. So let's add another color to that again, just to make it just the tiniest bit of paint. And let's grab a different one here. Let's do, I know it's all looking blue right now, but it's gonna change here very soon. So let's do that darker color there. Okay. Maybe this one. So this is fun, you just put some music on just start kind of playing, turn them different directions. And do that. And then let's get a different sponge because I want to do maybe some warmer colors. And I love the Quinacridone Magenta, one of my favorites. And it's okay if you even overlap a 
you know, one that you've already done. You can go back over the ones that are already kind of dry and it'll turn, you know, some of this more purple because it's laying over that. So it, it it's kind of nice. It just changes your colors. Um, again, you can change directions. And let's see, maybe some this color. This one is yellow oxide. And I can just, I can actually even use the same and it'll just mix it up and make it more of a butterscotchy kind of color. Because these are gonna get cut up, you know, you know, it doesn't matter so much that they're, you know, balanced the way I'm doing it, but that's just kind of habit, I guess. So like I said, it doesn't really matter, you know, it's gonna be so mixed up by the time I cut all these up. And it doesn't look like a ton now, I guess, I mean, it's a lot of color, but it will once you have, once you see the other side of it. Okay, so I think that's gonna be good enough for that one. And then if I want, I can kind of roll this out and I'll pull this off as like a little, you know, colorful background for something. Okay, so I have this and I want it to be dry. Um, and I think I'll go ahead and trying to decide. I think I'll go ahead and pull this off. It's it's only leaving a little bit of what it's doing. It's kind of making that gold outline. If you watched yesterday's video, whatever color you put down first, a lot of it pulls up off of the back of this. So it's going to be more pitted looking, but then it, it leaves that border around each of those cells, which by the time I cut these all up, that'll be a kind of a fun little line in there. Okay, the next step then, this is almost dry because it's such a thin layer, but you can kind of get an idea what it's going to look like through there, is I have to figure out what kind of background color I want. For these, you know, I'm trying to do some of my papers. Let me grab my pile. This is kind of what it ends up looking like, and you can see I've got some are metallics and some aren't, but see how you can see the little gold line in there? It's just, you know, it just adds another little interest to your design. If I were not tearing this up and using it, you know, as a background for anything, it, you know, it would you can maintain that grid pattern. So I need to decide what background color I want. You know, some of these I've used metallic or just one color um, to do that final pull. And that's what you'll see as the background to this. So it also is kind of fun to just mix them up, you know, and use some different color behind them too, or even just white. And I don't have a ton of white or even, you know, tinting it a little bit of color or even doing the metallic, but a different color of the metallic. One of the colors that I have not used that I could be tempted is this copper one. And I might try it just because I haven't used it yet. It's, it's a little darker, but I think it might make that really pop. Um, and this is kind of the pile of papers that I have already cut up. Um, and so I don't really have any of that coppery color. I'd also don't have silver. I could use that, but I really want to try this. So we're, we're going to do that. So this one is the iridescent copper fine. This is dry enough now. I, I don't want to do it wet because then it would just start mixing the paint. So I'm going to just put a good amount because this is going to be my final pull. Um, so when I did this the other day, I just did a whole bunch of using that same technique of putting the pattern down with a sponge just to get kind of a collage going. Uh, I did, even though I did different color backgrounds and different, you know, just did several sheets of that to then cut up. So they all kind of have a continuity kind of in the way that they were done. Um, but they're that mix of color and pattern that that she's looking for in her wedding design. So, 
Okay, so I'm gonna use a piece of the, the same rice paper I showed yesterday. I'll put links for this all again at the bottom in case you didn't see that video. Um, but I'm gonna let that dry. I've got this nice stripe here that will come off in my next pull that will be nice. And then I'm just gonna use this Beef All Baron. I just, this is just a nice way if you don't have, you know, you don't need this, you can just use your hand and just keep going over and over and over it. Um, but this is nice because it gives a nice even surface. And you can feel if it's still kind of cool and damp, you know, that it won't pull everything up. So a lot of times when I'm doing grungy papers, I will purposely pull up not getting everything up so that there's stuff, some left behind for the next one. And then that way you get layers and layers. And, and I love that look. For this, I'm trying to get everything pulled up because I don't really want any white space. I did have a couple of papers that ha that happened to, and, and it's fine uh, in the end when I finish these, but I really want everything to pull up if it will. So I'm gonna use my uh, heat tool and, and just dry this real quick. So I'll, I'll do this off. Now, some people might not like using a heat tool on their gel plate. You don't want to do it too close or leave it in one spot. So keep it moving. I I use mine all the time. I know some people will just set a fan off to the side. A lot of times, especially if I really want a good pull, I'll go do something else and just come back to this later. You know, it 15, 20 minutes or whatever, 10 minutes. Some, depends on where you are and how much humidity you have. But you don't have to, you know, if you're afraid to use this. But just if you do, keep it moving uh, and keep it, you know, high above your paper. And I've never had any, any problem with it. So I'm going to see... That's pretty good. I'm getting some left behind, but I think that's, for the most part, okay. So we're going to just pull this off. Oh, that's really pretty. Okay, so that gave me a nice, um, richer color, you know, deeper background. But you see the gold and the copper uh, together. You know, and I really like that. So it's kind of, you know, doing this is, it's not too grungy for a wedding. You know, it's a little heart and it's, it's kind of the fun part of it. This is, you know, not going to be like in your face all over the place, but um, I just like the different patterns, you know, uh, when I tear them up, they're going to look fine in my collage. So I won't do any more of these on camera. I think you get the idea. I'm going to put these away. Okay, so now what I want to do is end up with a bunch of papers like this. So I may have to do more, but I'm going to just take this one, um, and it's already you know dry enough, and then take a ruler. And I'm taking off all the white edges, but I'm leaving enough for myself because I'm going to use this scrap for something else. I have a whole bin of these. I'll show you in a sec here where I'll use these. I can add to add stuff to the, that edge and make those usable pieces too. So I'm just... And you can tear, you know, if, if you want to do your collage, you know, with really raggedy edges, you could, you could do... I'm kind of doing this with straight edges, but they're torn. Okay, and then I have, oops. And then I'm keeping a little bin of these that I will make, I'll do more to those and use them later. So the one question that I had as far as, you know, then what do you do with these? That it's sometimes it's hard to, to want to tear it up, especially if it ends up being a pattern or something you really like. But for this project, I just had fun don't think about where you're tearing it. Just kind of grab and tear anywhere. Um, and I did that all ahead so that I wouldn't think about it too much. You know, if I, if I was tearing each one as I needed a piece for my collage, I was thinking about it too much. So I just grabbed the whole pile of papers I was going to use and just started tearing them up. You can leave some bigger, leave small. Some of them I end up needing to trim a little bit later, but um, this this just makes me not, try not to think about it 
too much. But see, I like how it have these little kind of tiley grout line. Okay, so that's good for sizes. I can cut them more later if I need to. And I have my other bit. And then I decided, uh, you know, you could use, I wouldn't use Mod Podge for this, even though you use Mod Podge for collage, because I know I'm gonna wanna go over the top of this with more techniques later. So it would be better to use like a gel medium, a uh, matte gel, or uh, I'm just gonna use glue stick because that way I'd keep the glue off the surface of my papers. And I'm gonna look at this and just kind of see uh, which side maybe has a little flaw or something that I wanna hide. This, this side is smoother. I am gonna do another coat of paint on this, but before I cut my hearts out, I just, Thought it would be easier to collage all over the front of this first and then cut the hearts out. So I'm just gonna use, you could use any kind. I'm using you who that's what I have. And then I need, um, I'm gonna use my speed ball. I use this one just for glue instead of my paint brayers. And then I don't wanna think about this too much. They are all gonna get cut up into hearts. So it's really not gonna be a, a big deal. I, I really just kinda want to know that maybe what I have next to each other is gonna look okay color-wise or not be the same color, you know? So I'm just gonna start. And lay these down. So I'm just gonna, I'll let you watch while I do this. I do think about it a little bit just because I want, you know, not the same color or maybe not two metallics next to each other. Maybe I want, or if I do, you know, a lot of contrast, or maybe I don't want the same, uh, so like this one doesn't have metallic, you know, colors that are maybe gonna look okay together. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll let you watch. I'll speed this up and put some music on maybe so that I can enjoy what I'm doing this. And then I'll get back and show you the next spot. Mm -hmm.
Okay, hopefully I didn't overthink that too much. Um, I have a little bit here I need to trim off. And again, the back side of my primer chipboard, you know, it's kind of getting messed up from my dirty surface here, but I'm gonna go over that with another coat of paint and I'll show you what I used. So that won't matter. <clears throat> Just trim the big ones off so that it'll fit through my Cricut Maker. Okay, so this, you know, I want to let this dry before I try to cut it because I don't want my papers tearing. So I'm going to put this under some heavy books. Overnight would be great, but however long I need. And let that really kind of flatten out better and uh, dry before I cut it. So I'm going to put that as Okay, now I have a couple that I've already cut. And I just wanted to show you in case you do have a Cricut Maker. I have shown in a previous video how you can set your own material, a new material. So if you don't know how to do that, let me know and I'll maybe do a special little uh, video just for that so it's easy to find, but it is in a previous video of um, where I was making, the first one I think where I was making stencils with my Cricut. I show how you can add your own material. If you have a Cricut maker, it cuts more variety of materials than other make, other machines maybe. But even then, it only has certain things in the list and you need to go to where you browse materials and then you go all the way to the bottom and it lets you look at the material specification so you see how many passes, what kind of blade it's gonna use, and the pressure, which is a number, an assigned number. What I found with this is there are chipboard and balsa wood and all that different things, but I couldn't find one. You know, you kind of have to test it to see if it cuts all the way through. And when you use a knife blade, which is what I use for this, you can't add a new material with a knife blade, and you can't adjust an existing material with a knife blade. This may, be, may work with a deep, the deep cutter, but I did not try that. So I used like a tooling leather setting and was using it with default pressure. Uh, so it almost cut through, but not completely on, on it. And so I'm thinking my next one I'll try with a more pressure on the uh, tooled leather setting. And of the tooled leather, th uh, leather settings, I think there's three of them. And it was the middle one that I used. I'll look it up before I get this posted and I will put what setting I ended up using down in my description of this video. Uh, but so far, as you can see, the two I've cut did not cut all the way through. So I'm only mentioning that because you can just use a utility knife then, a little exacto, and I'm not going to do it here on my glass mat, but use, you know, a cutting mat underneath. And because it already cut through mo for the most part, I can go in and just very carefully, you know, just take your time and be patient. You don't want it to s s slit and cut your heart. So you want to, you know, kind of always be cutting away so that you're not cutting it. You don't accidentally slip. So just, you know, take your time and go around and around and you'll get that cut out. Now, if you don't have a, a machine that'll do this, you can buy, you know, pre-made little ornaments that you can do this decoupage on to the ornament. But, you know, I'm trying to do this with what I have at home. So you can use the utility knife. Like I said, just take your time. I would make a pattern, uh, a template for your heart so that they're all the same. And then, you know, just draw it on and, or you, if you've cut one out, you'll have that to put your knife against, you know, so that it doesn't accidentally cut the heart. So, you know, make yourself a pattern and didn't, it's just gonna, because this is thick material, it's just gonna take time. And, you know, don't push too hard and you'll get all of these cut out. So you can see when I did mine, I was able to lay out nine hearts by turning them different directions to cut and, and not waste any of this. So on my first one though, after I got them all cut out, I thought, oh, these are such cute. You know, this one I have a slit here, but it had these have more room around them. They would be really cute printed mats, you know, with a heart cut out. So I, I may make more of these just for fun and maybe only put four hearts on a 12 by 12. And that way I can cut them square or rectangle, however that ends up being, and use that as a heart-shaped mat. And then I still have a heart too. And that would be a cute little um, art piece 
to do. So you wouldn't be wasting any of it if you had them laid out, you know, in a proper direction that you can just cut straight lines. I won't waste this. I'll use uh, maybe a hole cutter or, some, or, you know, these are too thick for my punch, but um, I do have a, for my jewelry stuff, a, a bigger hole punch that I could punch this out and at least make some circles or, you know, I can cut them up with a knife and cut them into squares like little tiles and then, you know, stick those on. So I'm going to try to reuse this scrap, but I wanted to mention it because like I said, if I'm not trying to get as many out, I can make these intentional where there's no waste at all. On the next ones, I might do that. Okay. So once you have your little hearts, so the next thing, um, I have finished up three just to show you different ways. The next thing that I did, these are, you know, not pretty on the back. And when you cut them out, whether it's going to be with your knife or the Cricut, you know, it's, you can kind of see the, the edge and it's not perfectly flat. It kind of comes up like that a little bit uh, on the front and on the back. So you just want to go through since you've decoupaged these ahead in case any little papers are not, you know, stuck down really well. Just touch those up with um, a little goose stick or, you know, smart glitter glue or something like that just to make sure everything is stuck down. But it's really cute because I had no control over how these were cut out. So they're all really different, but they're all super cute. You know, you, you can't, it's not like there's a, a wrong way to do this. So the next step that I needed to do is I want to clean up those edges and fin make that look more like a finished thing. So you could either, you know, use this as a bone folder and try to flatten out that whole edge, you know, and put them under books just to make sure everything's nice and flat. Or the other thing that you can do, which is kind of what I did, especially if you are cutting these out by hand, is to just use a little emery board, a little nail file, and just go around the whole edge. And it can kind of, you can get, you know, a little more or less if you want them to look a little more distressed, you know, and, and kind of actually sand off some of that edge paper. But this way, you know, if you had a little slip of your knife or anything like that, you can get this all nice and smoothed out um, so that it will look much more like a finished professional job that you're doing. So you want to go around all the edges and I would do the back side too, because I'm going to paint this again. You know, if, if I, in a perfect world, if this didn't get all messed up, but it is just a primer coat. Uh, I could do another coat of just the magnetic primer if I wanted or black paint. So, you know, go around all of those. But what I ended up using is I had some of this iridescent graphite from Liquitex, and it has just the slightest it's kind of almost a, a dark charcoal gray it's a graphite and I found that if I used now I left this overnight and that was not good because I need it so I should have cleaned this roller if you're just using it like I was during the day and it's you know it's still squishy um, I just wrap it in saran wrap but I should have taken this off and washed it out last night so uh, I found that using this is just a throwaway foam roller and now it's not going to be smooth because I just ripped some off. So I'm going to have to get an, hopefully I have another one. But I found that using this uh, foam roller gave you a nice even uh, coat and a nice texture instead of using a brush. Uh, I had, this one I had originally brushed that primer layer on. And I found that doing that with a roller uh was better just so you didn't have a lot of brush marks so you want to do that um, and that just gives the back side a nice finished look and you know it has this one has a little bit of sheen you could use a color whatever you want but I kind of like the look of it for what I'm doing so that you know if they want to put their little phrase on the back it really it pops that way okay now on mine I didn't have my Cricut cut out the little holes that I needed because I was using a knife blade I was afraid it wouldn't really do a nice job for that so I just used my crocodile because this can go through a lot of layers um, and you know just made do one and then use it as a pattern to mark uh, and do the other ones and then the other thing I did to finish 
uh, is I used, you can use, you want to darken this edge or a color if you don't want it to be black, but I think it just kind of frames the whole thing. You know, you can compare it to that one just to give you that finished edge. So you could use, you know, a soft pastel or something like that um, just to darken that up. Uh, you know, you want to be careful and not get paint on the front. You could also use the, you know, use the, your distress inks or oxides. And I kind of did that just to kind of pull it over into the color a little bit, just to give it, um, this one, this walnut stain I have on this one. You could use, you know, black soot if you want it to be a color, the distress ink or oxide in black soot color, something like that. So you want to do that. And then the other thing to finish these off like you could do any anything that you want. They don't. You could leave them like this and just finish those edges, punch your holes, and call it done. You know, and they're really cute. Okay, so now I'm back with the second part of my video with all the finishing touches that I decided to do. Um, I decided I did not want to just leave them plain because I like to doodle and I just wanted to add, you know, more than this. You could obviously just leave them this way. Uh, if you did so, it would be super easy for them to just use this side for the magnetic words or the, the dark side um, because this primer, it, it allows you to paint over. So the words will stick, you know, either side. So sorry about the background noise. We had another, yet another snowstorm. Can't seem to get past these, so it's a snowplow day. So that's what that background noise is. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna show you what I did to decorate these um, up. And I did find that even with what I did, these pretty much will still stick to even my textured work. So, so the first thing that I did, these are some of the finished um, the finished ones is I decided I wanted to do some stenciling on them and because I'm not great at stenciling in a very neat and tidy way I decided to do the stenciling with a uh, light modeling paste so I've done all of these little different flowers and I'll, I'll kind of show you which ones I just I wanted something that maybe would coordinate with the background gel prints and also at the same time add a texture and just be kind of another dimension to the work. So one thing that you can do is if you've never used um, modeling paste, this is just by Liquitex, uh, light modeling paste gel, gel medium. And the nice thing about this one is you can um, actually mix some paint color with that instead of just being white. So I'm gonna just take a little tray here and use a little clean plastic palette knife and we're just gonna get a little bit out. I used, um, let's see how many, I have about 10 more things to finish. And I'm not sure what colors are gonna work for these, but I wanna do a pink. I, in the previous ones, I did kind of that turquoisey blue color cause that's one of Leah's favorite colors. And then, um, and it also kind of was a contrast to maybe what I had going on. And then I did some gold metallic. And then this one, I think I want to do kind of a hot pink. Maybe if I get my Quinacridone magenta mixed with this white, we'll see if that's bright enough. So you just want to mix that really well. Just kind of like, like it's like mixing food coloring and frosting is about the consistency of this. And I just want to get any white clumps out. And actually, I should not have used this one to do my color. And now I have to clean it if I change colors. This was supposed to be my getting out of my white pot and then my other knife for the color. So I'm going to clean this before it dries too much. That way, if I wanna do it another color, I, I have a clean one. Okay, so I have my kind of bright pink color, and I just think that'll be good because it's a nice contrast adding, you know, kind of making these all kind of coordinate because when I did the collage and cut them into heart, I had no idea, you know, it's kind of like doing a master board where you cut it upside down, you don't know what you're gonna get. So I'm gonna take one and I kind of look at it and see, you know, I don't wanna maybe use the same stencil or maybe I do. 
of one of the background papers, but I've really been liking the florals. So you can uh, just take a little pattern stencil of some kind. These are, this one's from Tim Holtz. And then I just kind of arrange it, you know, so that I have this kind of a little floral spray. I have to keep in mind, you know, I'm this is a wedding that I'm doing these for, so I'm trying to keep it kind of the boho wedding look. And so I'm just gonna do a portion of this. I like using a modeling paste like this through a stencil because like I said, I'm not the best, the tidiest stenciler. And this is very forgiving. So you might keep a something to set that on. And you have a little bit of working time with this. But you can see I kind of made a little mess there. Let's see if I can get some of that off. So one thing I can do, and this is good to show, is if you do make a little mess, just take a baby wipe or a little Q-tip. And you can clean that off while it's still wet. Now, if I wanted that leaf there, I could kind of clean off a portion and go back. Like, for example, let's just do that so you can see that you have a little working time. So just clear off the part that you didn't like. And you can either leave that or if you want to fix it, Make sure you don't put your, your heart down on that or you'll get it on the back side. But you can lay this down again. Make sure I had a little mess on this side was why I had that problem. Clean off the back side and then just try to lay it down again where I had it. And then I can fit, oops. And then I can fix that. And then you'll want to clean off the edge. And you can go back with your Distress Oxide and, you know, touch that up if you need to. But then I kind of look at it and see, like, I don't really need this here. It didn't come out very good. It just looks like little specks that don't make sense. So I can take those off. And then around on this side also, I have a, little, a few that don't really make sense where it was just part of a leaf and then it, it just looks like a little blob. So just kind of clean those off. So you have working time before this dries. So just clean off anything you don't like around the edge. The other thing you could do is you can mask off your stencil with some tape, but because each one of these is different, I don't want to keep having to do that. So I've just been, you know, using a baby wipe and cleaning off what I don't like. But see, that added that color that this was missing. And then I can continue and add some more embellishment to that, and I'll show you what I did. So this would be the first step is, you know, I'll do the rest of these in this pink, uh, and then we'll come back and, and finish up. Now, one thing I do want to show, you don't see any kind of center of this flower. And part of that is because I did not do a good job cleaning out my stencil. It didn't come through. So you want to make sure when you're finished that you clean out your stencil and any teeny tiny details like that, that you have knocked your, you know, cleaned those out because that is why those didn't, those didn't come out. So um, otherwise I would have had cute little centers. Now I can fix that because I'm going to be using some paint. So uh, it's nice if you have like maybe a little tray with water that you can soak this right away so that it, um, it you keep it clean. So I'm gonna continue on and I will be right back. Okay, so now I am back and the pink ones are drying. So you wanna let those dry. I usually have plenty of other things to work on so I let them dry overnight. 
And then I decided the next thing that I wanted to do was to just do something around the edge. So I've already done, these are a group of, you know, second step. These, the blue is the um, modeling paste stencils. And I've done different ones, you know, just a variety again, but using the same color, just to kind of, you know, tie all my ornaments together. So all of these are dry. And then what I have done, um, this one, I had done some in gold, like I said, is I had taken a Posca pen. Uh, you can use any kind of, I, I like Posca pens, you can use any brand, but they're paint pens, so they go nicely over the gel printing, which is also acrylic paint. So you just take a, a Posca pen, make sure you shake it up really well. And I've already done all of these, but I'm gonna grab maybe one, grab one that I haven't done anything on yet. And you're just gonna, you know, shake your pen, make sure it's working. And then I'm just do looking at my collage, you know, where I have some kind of breaks, and I am just doing part of it in kind of a, what looks like a fake stitch, and then some in just like little puncture, like little dots. So they're all different, but they all have that sort of pattern. So I'm just going around the edge with my pen, just as if I were sewing and doing a little stitch. So, you know, and then just do dots. You can do whatever you want or not at all or in a color or anything like that. So it's just a real simple little detail around the edge. I, I like to have things around the edges. Just kind of gives it that finishing touch. So you would do that on all of them. And then I can even add, add to this. And I want to show you this one thing. I'm not going to go to all of these, but some of them, if there is a flower, for example, this this one had a flower in its collage. So you could take, like this one has a flower. You could take and actually outline these petals in a contrasting color or a similar color just to kind of bring that layer forward. So it puts this in the background by adding just uh, the little paint pen or metallic markers or anything that you have. These were all with the Posca pens is just, you know, create a little more detail on one of the uh, items in the background. So this one had a flower here and one over here. So I just kind of embellish those a little bit with paint pen, so it's still flat, but it kind of brings it forward to the background. And then these little medallions here just enhance those more. So those looked as plain as, as these before, but you can see there's a little shading on them. And then I've added something to the centers. So it's just that extra little bit of detail. To me, it, it looks better to either leave it plain and do nothing or, you know, add detail, but finish that off. So even just leaving this completely plain like it is would be okay. But if you're going to add this, it's almost like you need to finish it. So doing this little bit of detail. So that was just using my paint pens, a little gold one and then a purple with another little gold inside. So just, you know, kind of pull colors from your collage papers and use those or totally contrasting papers if it looks like it, or colors, paints, if it needs to have more color brought in. Cause some of these ended up a little bit kind of boring, I guess. So to do the little bit of shading, I'm gonna show you on a flower because I really, I like how it turned out. We'll, we'll work on this one. I'm gonna take some, um, actually some Tombow markers, and I really liked using the two of them. This one ended up kind of, it's almost run out, so it's not working very well. Maybe this end, this end works a little bit better. So these are just these double-sided um, Tombow water-based markers. The water base is nice because then you can blend um, with just your water pen. So I'm using, where is my water pen? So you can even just use these, or just little water pens if you've never used one of these before. This top screws off. Um, this says push right here. You, you just squeeze it under your faucet or in the water and it just kind of like a straw, a straw it will suck the water into the, the re reservoir. And then to get water out, you have just this brush and to get the, it wet for the first time, just squeeze that. And once it's wet, that'll last you know, quite a bit. But if you've never used these, are great just to kind of do some blending. So I'm gonna use that. Um, this one is uh, a little darker blue. It's number 403, and it is kind of a, 
you know, a darker, but by the time I water this down, it's gonna be a lot lighter. So I'm gonna just take this and I just go on the flower. Let me see if I can get closer for you. So I'm just gonna kind of start here in the center where a flower might be darker. And then you could also do like just the outer edge and it's just gonna kind of, I didn't have to put very much because I'm gonna blend this, you know, as little or as much as you want with that water. And it just kind of softened it and gave, gave it that sort of shadowed look. And then when that dries, that'll be really pretty. So it's just kind of adding that dimension to your flower and making it just a little bit. It didn't take much. You don't have to be a great artist because I am not. I'm just learning all these little tricks to kind of make things have a little more depth and shadow and that sort of thing. So that can work. And then the other thing you can do is you can put water first. I'm going to this petal that doesn't have anything. And that'll kind of, as I add this, it'll kind of help it to bleed up right away. So, you know, you could do it with water first or not, depending, you know, just kind of practice and see how much you might make. Some of them have more color and some have less. Um, and just kind of look to the, you know, the outer edge of the petal where it might be darker or on this inner, um, inner part. So I'm just gonna. And then sometimes you have enough um, ink on your pen just to use that and that's enough for you too. So it just depends on where you're putting the color. Now keep in mind if you use a different color and I'll show you that with some green your background is blue already, so it's going to, you know, kind of blend, mix those colors if you lay them on top of each other. I want the outer edge of this one a little bit darker. There, actually, this is the top edge. I see how easy that was and that's just you know just a little bit of shading I don't know how much that's picking up on camera but um, just enough to kind of give it that little added little added bit and you can compare it to this one where I haven't done anything yet so it's just you know overall it's going to um, overall it's just gonna add that little extra detail so that is with the blue and then originally when this one was working better, I was actually taking the two colors and adding that also um, and then blending it in and, and that was really pretty. So just, you know, kind of play around. If you are have never tried this, before, when you um, are making your flowers, maybe give yourself a little, uh, before you've used up all the, the modeling paste, give yourself a little swatch on a piece of paper or something uh, so that you can kind of practice with what colors you might like because you might like laying a different color on that too So those are the two I used there and then though this was 133 and it's kind of this limey green limey green color um, And I like that color too. So for the leaves and stems. I was just going right over this um, Just over the whole thing and not even blending it and you can if you you know, it's however much time you want to take um, but it just kind of, you know, gave it that little bit. You know, if you leave all of this white and don't color your uh, your modeling paste before you use it, you can use any color because you're just going over white, you know, and your paint skills are gonna show up a lot more, obviously, because it's over white. I think this is more forgiving, but I may do some white just to see, just to practice. So um, that might be a pretty idea since the colors of markers I have are Kind of in this color palette but you can see how you know i might need to blend a little bit but by the time that dries it's going to kind of soak in um, and just be uh, maybe a mottled color and not just so solid so i just like that that was just kind of a little bit of detail to add and then always i like gold so maybe for the centers you can do that a contrasting color like i like doing the black and the white um, but you could even do just with your gold and do just on the ones that have this little raised top. Now it kind of soaks in. If you haven't sh um, shaken your paint pens, you know they won't be 
as, o as opaque. And so you want to kind of make sure you shake those really well. But it just, you know, gives you just a little bit more detail to your design. So I'll play around with all of these um, and finish them up. But once you've done that, you can even do little, maybe little stitch marks that I had done. Pick a color, let's see, something that will kind of show up, but not too much. And I have pink going, so let's see. This kind of a coral color. I could use red because I do have a little bit of red on there. That might be pretty too. We'll see how. I kind of always like to start more safe and then go bolder if I decide it's not enough. But you know, just some little X marks here. This might be not be enough. The nice thing about the paint pens, yeah, I didn't shake it very much, but you see the little X marks, just like little stitch marks. So I could go back over that with a red one now if I think that's not enough. The nice thing is, this is kind of a red orange. The nice thing is it, it's paint, you know, and it's still wet, so I can actually even wipe off what I didn't like. But then you wanna make sure that you dry this before you go over it again. So use a heat gun or something to get that dry. Otherwise, when you paint, it'll just kind of bleed out. Okay, so you can see it's just a little subtle thing, but they're just little details that really make that look finished off. So I'll go ahead and, you know, do all the hearts. You could also just add some doodling. You know, um, I like using just black and white. So here I've just made some little curly cues with some dots, added some dots to, to these flowers, and it just makes it a little more playful looking. So I've ended up with, you know, quite a little variety of these hearts. These are some of my favorites. Um, this one, you know, in my collage, it ended up with, you know, not much interest with the paper because it ended up with mostly one. So having a contrast in the flowers is nice, but I, it, you know, it's simple, but I like that one. This one uh, was almost a toss. So I wanted to show it though, because even when I really do a horrible looking job, I just keep working it until I like it. I had uh, this, I think this it, this originally was a gold uh, modeling paste through the stencil. And then I, sh I shadowed it and I really kind of liked how this part turned out. Some of them I wasn't liking as much. I ended up doing some dark purple, it was too much. So then I outlined to try to add purple and other spots to kind of balance it. Then it was way overboard. I didn't like how the colors were going together. I didn't like anything about it. I thought I was going to throw it out. But then I took, after it dried, I took uh, some gold and then went over some of the purple to tone it down. And I don't hate it anymore. I mean, it's not my favorite one, but uh, I also did something here with the flowers so that it would kind of try to balance it and not make this be so prominent. So it's okay. It, it's it's worked. It worked. So the, then the last little touch um, for these, you know, once I had these all done, this is again one of my favorite, favorite ones. And again, doing the little dots um, is to just put a little hanger on it. So I have used, I uh, had a bunch of this lace still that is some lace that I rusted. You can use tea stained or, or ribbon, whatever you have. Um, but I, I cut about seven inches. I'm going to measure this for you so you can kind of see the dimension that I've been working with. These are about four inches wide, and they are about, I think, three and a half, overall three and a half tall. So it's a nice size for a little ornament. You know, you could do these, I'm doing these for a wedding, but you could do these for your Christmas tree or any kind of holiday, you know, um, sort of thing. Gift tags, you know, they don't have to be a heart shape and they, they could be anything, but just using your your papers and the adding some detail on top of it would be really cute gift tags. So 
Um, that's what I have, a bunch of those. So then the last, you know, thing was adding the ribbon and I even had to get fussy and decide which way I wanted to tie them. And some of them, I had started tying them with the knot in the front. Um, then I kind of like it with the knot in the back. So it doesn't really matter. Um, just feed that through there and, and tie a little knot and then, and then you're good to go. I used about seven inches of ribbon for each one. Uh, that seemed to be a nice a nice length of ribbon. And then I'm going to use, uh, I'll show you a picture, like I said, at the end with how these look hanging. But I ended up, I had done uh, my niece's wedding 10 years ago. And one of the things, we did a similar type thing, not with the magnet and all that kind of stuff, but a place to write marriage advice. And we hung them to actually, I made a little uh, gold tree out of real branches and we used these little teeny tiny um, clothespins that you can get. Just They're just, you know, at any craft store you can get them. And then I uh, just spray painted them gold. So I had a bunch of these, just enough of these actually left over that I kept that I can hang those um, on the window. So you'll see that at the end. Then I wanted to just quickly show you uh, the words. She had ordered all these words and sent me, you know, sent me a handful of them. And I had mentioned to her, you know, I can, they make magnetic sheets. We can make more words if you want. I thought it would be fun because it's a wedding if we had their names, you know, and maybe personal words for them. Uh, they have cats, so their cat's name. So, you know, I'd have J. Michael and Leah Rose and one of their cats is April May and just different words that go with their life. She's a, a singer-songwriter, and he plays the guitar, too, and, um, you know, just all their different hobbies and things like that. He works from home most of the time, and he loved to garden and that sort of thing. So I actually took the words that she had and uh, had her give me a list of words that she might want, and she had this huge list I wasn't expecting. But it all worked out perfect. I ended up, I'll show you what I used. These are just the tiniest bit thinner, maybe like a millimeter if that thinner than the magnets that she sent. So these are a little bit stronger. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to even see, but the ones that I found were so, you know, almost identical by the time I added the word to it. And then I just kind of played around on my computer looking for the closest font I could find and trying to get it to the right size uh, and boldness and all that. So they're not exact, but they're really similar, similar enough for me. But you can do, you know, just pick any font. If you're going to make all of yours, you just pick any font that you like, you know, and make it nice and a nice size. These, these were three eighths of an inch uh, strips word you know and then however long the word is so I wanted to get three eighths of an inch on mine too so that they would match and I ended up using what did I do I'm sure you can order things online but I found this uh at at Walmart just in the kit craft section I think and they had these adhesive sheets so this came two sheets to a pack and they're exactly this size which is eight by eight by five so I took um, and this is what they look like. So they're adhesive. They're they're so that you could like a, a ta uh, stick on a photograph and then put it on your refrigerator. That's what they're intended for, I think, or like on your locker, that kind of thing. Um, but I just, on my computer, I, I found the font and then I just made my size I was working on. I actually did this in order to get my, where I had to, where the font I found was in my Photoshop. I did not have the same fonts on my word processing program or in my Cricut or anything. So I did it through Photoshop and I just made a, a rectangle because I don't have all the Photoshop skills. I'm just learning it. So there's probably an easier way to do this, but I didn't know. So I just took a rec, made a rectangle shape and put it on my document, which was this same, this eight by five. So I did a 3 8 inch so that I could see where I wanted my text to fit. So each line is a, uh, a text box on Photoshop that's overlaid over my rectangle. I got rid of the rectangles later. They were just a way so that I could butt these right up against each other so that I know when I cut them at 3 8 they're all the same. 
uh, I, I couldn't figure out how else to get the spacing exactly right. So I just did that. So each of these lines is a text box. And then I just did four spaces. I think this is like 17 point uh, for this font is the size and then it's in bold and then i just did four spaces in between each one and that gives me enough room to cut in between each word so i have these ready to go i had been practicing on the two sheets that i had uh, and i was working with some sticker paper that is eight and a half by eleven so i didn't want to waste anything so i can get two of these Per print, you know, print one and then flip it over and print the other side. So I can get two of these and, and, well, per package of this. So that was the most cost saving thing for me to do, but I need to buy more of these. So my goal is to just be able to print this out on this, this paper. I'll put links for these items below um, because this is uh, something that I had. This is to do stickers. So it's permanent adhesive vinyl. I wanted something other than just paper because I wanted it to be, you know, able to be used for games over and over again so they're both sticky backed because that's what i had which is good because then you know i just take this adhesive off stick this whole sheet you know take the adhesive off and stick the two sticky sides together and then just using a craft knife and a ruler i can cut the strips and then it's really easy this stuff is so thin you can just cut it with scissors so then you can just, you know, cut them apart. So that's what I'm doing for the words. And they ended up sticking um, well to the hearts. So I can just, you know, they can make their little advice or whatever. And they, they stick. Um, this one's kind of bent. These aren't quite as strong, I think, as the, uh, the other ones. But, I mean, they, they work for what we're doing. And then I think they'll also even stick somewhat some of them better than others over this is the raised stuff so you know it's I think I need to kind of bend them so that they get some you know stick but they'll even stick to the front so if you wanted to you know do your little thing on the front you could so anyway that's my share for today um, I'm really happy with how it turned out I'll post a picture at the end so you can see what it's going to look like displayed. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And I'm going to go finish doodling on my little hearts. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.